Hello everyone, welcome to Vidyan classes. In this video, we are going to discuss reasoning and general intelligence section of Karnataka MBA Pages Set 2015 question paper. For other videos like English, GK and Cons, go through our playlist and watch the videos taken by our other faculty members. And before starting this video, if you liked our sessions, then kindly like, share and subscribe our channel for more interesting videos. So let us start now. A bus has exactly six stops on its route. The bus first stops at stop 1 and then it stops 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 respectively. After the bus leaves stop 6, the bus turns and returns to stop 1 and repeats the cycle. The stops are at six buildings that are in alphabetical order L, M, N, O, P and Q. So there are six buildings they have told L, M, N, O, P and Q and these are the stops for the bus. Okay. Now, the conditions given are P is the third stop. See, there are six stops totally at the buildings L, M, N, O, P and Q and you don't know in which order they are, okay? The buildings are in which order they are, P doesn't know. So, there are six buildings and P is the third stop, okay? So, this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So, P is the third stop, M is the sixth stop. M is the sixth stop. Okay. Then the stop O is the stop immediately before Q. Stop O is immediately before Q. This is the order. Okay. After the stop O, then comes stop Q. Got it? Then N is the stop immediately before L. N is the stop immediately before L. Which means after N, the next stop is what? The next stop will be L. So, there are two places here. This O and Q can occupy the place 1 and 2 because these two should be together because after O, the next stop should be Q itself. So, O and Q can occupy the place 1 and 2 or it can occupy the place 4 and 5 also. Right? Similarly, N and L. See, after the N, the next stop will be L. So, N and L can occupy the place 1 and 2 or 4 and 5 respectively. So, now let us see according to the question. In case n is the fourth stop. So, in case if n is the fourth stop, then immediately you know that the fifth stop will be L. And hence, the first stop will be O, then second stop will be Q. So, therefore, in case n is the fourth stop, which among the following must be the stop immediately before P? So, which is the stop that is immediately before P? That is Q. So, option B, Q is the answer. Got it? Next. In case L is the second stop. See, there are six stops and in the condition it was given that P is the third stop and M is the sixth stop. And O is the stop just before Q and N is the stop just before L. Now, in case L is the second stop. So, if this L is the second stop, then first stop will be N. And uh, fourth stop will be O, fifth stop will be Q. Now, which among the following must be the stop immediately before M? So, immediately before M, the stop here is option D, that is Q. Then, in case a passenger boards the bus at O, see first, let us see the condition. First, let us write the given condition, that is P is the third stop, M is the sixth stop, O and Q, then N and L. Now, in case a passenger boards the bus at O, okay, that is in the O building where there is a stop. So, in case a passenger bo boards the bus at O, rides past one of the stops, okay, so he rides past one of the stops after O and gets off at P and he is getting off at P. See, that means if you have to re write, represent this line in this given diagram, okay, in this given blank, how will you fill? In case a passenger boards the bus at O, rides past one of the stops and gets off at P. So, he is getting off at P. That means, he is boarding the bus at O, then he rides past one of the stops which is Q because Q comes after O and then he gets off at P. So, that means, this exactly fits here. Now, which of the following must be true? So, therefore, fourth and fifth stop will be obviously N and L. So, 
that means o is the first stop q will be the second stop and p will be the third stop so o is stop one yes this is true q is stop three no q is stop two p is stop four no it is obviously given p is the stop three in the condition itself n is stop five no n is the stop four so the answer is o is stop one then next question look at the series 3 4 7 8 11 12 and then which number should come next so 3 4 is consecutive and 5 and 6 are skipped okay after 3 and 4 5 and 6 are skipped then 7 and 8 is consecutive then 9 and 10 are skipped then 11 and 12 are consecutive therefore according to this pattern if you see after 12 13 and 14 must be skipped and the next number will be 15 so option d 15 is the answer look at the series 58 52 46 40 34 and dash what number should come next very easy so here the numbers are very close to each other so if you see the differences the difference between 58 and 52 is 6 52 and 46 difference is 6 46 and 40 difference is 6 again 40 and 34 difference is 6 so the difference is constant hence the next number will be what whose difference should be 6 34 minus 6 is 28 so 28 is the right answer f a g g a f h a i i a h and dash so here if you see the first letters in all the given four words so this is f then g f g h i so according to this if you go f g h i so the first letter here will be j f g h i j yes so therefore option b and option c you can eliminate then second letter is same right a and a here so you can skip this thing and you can only see the last letter here okay because seeing the second letter it is all a right so second letter is a here also then third letter if you see here it is g f i h see like this if you see f g in the alphabetical order if you think okay the second word and the first word you see f g right fourth word and third word you see h i f g h i similarly okay there will be two words here it will be j and here it will be k got it see second and first f g h i j k like this so that means here the letter with which the letter that comes here is k so the answer will be j a k j a k is the answer got it then so again if you see the first letters here c d e d is skipped c d e e f g f is skipped g if you skip h then comes i then if you skip j then comes k so that means this is correct so the first letter will be i so option a and b you can eliminate here option a and b can be eliminated so either c or d will be our answer so i is the second letter first letter now second letter if you see m n o n is skipped o p q p is skipped so if you skip one letter q r s so it will be yes and just verify so yes t u so this is correct so that means the second letter is yes so here option c has the second letter as is so we can mark c as our answer right so the answer will be i s yes instead of a meter scale a cloth merchant uses 120 centimeter scale okay this should be 120 centimeter scale while buying but uses an 80 centimeter scale while selling the same cloth if he offers a discount of 20 percent on cash payment what is his overall percent profit okay now let us understand first cloth merchant is buying cloth okay and then he is selling it to the customer so now he is cheating on both the sides that is while buying he uses 120 centimeter scale instead of 1 meter scale and while selling he sells only 80 centimeter instead of 1 meter 
okay so you know that one meter is equals to how many centimeters one meter is equals to 100 centimeter right let us assume let's assume that one centimeter is equals to one rupee that the cost of one centimeter cloth is equals to one rupee okay this is what a general price let us assume okay one centimeter is equals to one rupee okay so while buying while buying he is cheating okay he is he uses 120 centimeter scale while buying but actually he is telling what he is buying only one meter that is 100 centimeter length cloth 100 centimeter length cloth will cost him how much if cost price of one centimeter is equals to one rupee then 100 centimeter will cost him 100 rupees so he is paying only 100 rupees while buying while he himself is buying he is paying only 100 rupees for 100 centimeter but here he has done a cheating what he has not bought 100 centimeter instead he has bought 120 centimeter that means that means what his cost price for one centimeter cloth will be how much now here according to this the cost price for one centimeter is equals to one rupee but here he has bought 120 centimeter that means for 120 centimeter he has bought it for 100 rupees therefore cost price of one centimeter for whom for cloth merchant cost price for of one centimeter for cloth merchant will be how much 100 upon 120 that is 25 is 100 26 is 120 5 by 6 rupees which means less than a rupee okay so his cost price is 5 by 6 rupees but while telling it to the customer he says what he bought it at 1 rupee per centimeter okay so while telling to the customer this cloth merchant will say that i bought this at 1 rupee per 1 centimeter okay he says that is his cost price but he did he don't say that he has done a cheating while buying so he has he did not bought 100 centimeter okay he has bought 120 centimeter so that means his cost price actual cost price will be 5 by 6 rupees per centimeter but while telling to the customer he says how much 1 rupee per centimeter remember this thing now but uses an 80 centimeter scale while selling the same cloth that means now customer is coming to his shop okay so if customer is buying one meter cloth so one meter means 100 centimeter so for 100 centimeter customer will pay 100 rupees okay because this person this cloth merchant will say that i am selling this at what no profit no loss okay i am selling this at no profit loss at what cost price i had brought at that price only i am giving it to you he says okay for the customer so that means customer will pay how much customer will pay only 100 rupees okay because he says that the cost price for one centimeter is one rupee so customer has to pay 100 rupees okay for one meter cloth understood and he says that if he offers see but uses an 80 centimeter scale while selling the same cloth if he offers a discount of 20 percent on cash payment what is his overall percent profit so customer has to pay 100 rupees for 100 centimeter here also he has done a cheating that means he has not sold 100 centimeter length he has said he has sold only 80 centimeter length but this thing customer doesn't know customer believes that he has got 100 centimeter only now let us see in the point of view of customer first so in the point of view of customer if you see customer thinks that he got 100 centimeter length of cloth and he has to pay 100 rupees believing that one centimeter is costing one rupee okay and then this cloth merchant gives an offer also for him so he says that uh, he will give him a 20 percent discount 20 percent of 100 rupees is 20 rupees that means customer has to pay only 80 rupees now customer has to pay only 80 rupees that means this 80 rupees is the selling price of the cloth merchant this 80 rupees is the selling price of the cloth merchant got it because he is getting the money from the customer that means he is selling it for the customer at 80 rupees right for 80 rupees what is the length of the cloth he is selling now let us see in the point of view of customer i mean cloth merchant now let us see in the point of view of cloth merchant so cloth merchant he did not sell 100 centimeter length cloth instead he sold how much only 80 centimeter length cloth so 80 centimeter length cloth he sold it at what price 80 rupees this is his selling price 
but what is his actual cost price for this 80 centimeter length cloth what is his actual cost price his actual cost price for 1 centimeter is 5 by 6 rupees therefore his cost price for 80 centimeter length will be 80 into 5 by 6 rupees okay his actual cost price for 80 centimeter will be 80 into 5 by 6 rupees which means it is less than 80 rupees so his selling price is this much 80 rupees but his cost price is this much okay have you understood up to this much now let me erase some part so you understood this is the cost price and this is going to be the selling price now let us see only that part because we have to see what is the profit percent right profit means what profit means selling price minus cost price will give you profit profit percent means selling price minus cost price divided by cost price into 100 that will give you profit percent so here you know that cost price will be 80 into 5 by 6 80 into 5 by 6 i can write it as 400 upon 6 85 is a 400 400 by 6 rupees this is the cost price selling price is 80 rupees if i have to write with the denominator of 6 then i'll multiply by 6 both to the numerator as denominator so i will get 480 upon 6 rupees as the selling price cost price is 400 upon 6 rupees if you want to see only profit in terms of rupees profit in terms of rupees will be selling price minus cost price but profit percentage if you want to see selling price minus cost price divided by cost price into 100 this is profit percentage okay so therefore therefore first to see what is the profit then we will calculate profit percent okay profit will be what selling price minus cost price selling price is 480 by 6 minus cost price is 400 upon 6 so denominator is equal so 480 minus 400 80 by 6 is the profit okay 80 by 6 is the profit so profit percentage will be what profit percentage will be profit divided by cost price into 100 profit is selling price minus cost price so profit upon cp into 100 you will get profit percentage so therefore profit percentage will become how much now profit percentage will become profit is 80 upon 6 cost price is how much 400 upon 6 into 100 so 6 and 6 will get cancelled 81 za, 85 za. so profit percentage will be 1 by 5 into 100 that is how much 20 percentage 1 by 5 into 100 is 20 percent so his overall profit percentage is 20 percentage okay so this is the actual method that you should follow so the answer here is 20 percent right next question a man has nine friends four boys and five girls four boys and five girls in how many ways can he invite them if there has to be exactly three girls in the invitees okay so in how many ways he can invite them if there has to be exactly three girls in the invitees so there should be exactly three girls in the invitees so three girls should be there so total girls are five so what are the possibilities like how many people he can invite so three girls is compulsory right so there are five out of five girls he has to choose three girls okay so this is that is five c three ways so three girls that is compulsory and then what are the other possibilities that he can call all the four boys also see from five girls he has to call three girls so that he can call in five c three ways but for boys he can call all the four boys that is one possibility so all the four boys he will he can call in four c four ways okay then which is the next possibility that is he has to call three girls there should be exactly three girls and they did not mention anything about boys right so now he can call either three boys also in the first case we have assumed that he will call all the four boys in the second case we are assuming that he is calling only three boys but three girls he is calling okay that is compulsory then he can call only two boys also okay because because they have not mentioned anything about boys so we have to take all the possibilities okay we have to consider all the possibilities here he can either call all the four boys so if you call all the four boys this will be the answer if you call all the three girls this will be the answer if you call only two boys this will be our answer 
and there is another possibility that he can call only one boy also he can call only one boy also and there is also another possibility that he cannot he may not call any of the boys okay he may not call any of the boys okay he, he will call only three girls so that is also another possibility because given condition is what there has to be exactly three girls so here there are three girls right so no need to add boys that is one case here also there are three girls but he is calling one boy among four here also there are three girls but he is calling two boys out of four here also there are three girls but he is calling three boys out of four and here also there are three girls but he is calling all the four boys so in all this you have to see okay these are the different ways he can invite understood so therefore 5 c3 means what 5 into 4 into 3 divided by 3 into 2 into 1 so that means a 3 and 3 will get cancelled 2 to the 4 so 5 to the 10 so 10 into 4 c4 is 1 4 c4 is 1 so 10 into 1 will be how much 10 into 1 is 10 10 into 1 is 10 then 5 c3 again it is 10 4 c3 will be how much 4 c3 will be 4 so 10 into 4 will be 40 again 5 c3 is 10 4 c2 4 c2 will be how much 4 into 3 divided by 2 into 1 2 to the 4 so 3 to the 6 so 10 into 6 60 okay so 4 c2 is 60 then again 5 c3 is 10 4 c1 is again 4 so 4 c1 is 4 that is 40 then 5 c3 is 10 so here also this is 10 so this is also 10 so in how many ways he can invite so 60 plus 40 100 100 plus 40 140 then plus 20 140 plus 20 160 so the number of ways he can invite them is 160 ways in 160 ways next eight persons a b c d e f g and h are sitting around a rectangular table so they are sitting around a rectangular table in such a way that two persons sit on each of the four sides of the table facing the center two persons sit on each of the four sides each of the four sides of the table facing the center person sitting on opposite sides are exactly opposite to each other so that means the eight persons are sitting in this order okay so they are sitting around a rectangular table in such a way that two persons sit on the each of the four sides and they are facing center they are facing center understood they are facing center now d faces north and sits exactly opposite to h say d faces north that means north means there are two possibilities for d so either d can come here or one more possibility will be what one more possibility is d can come here d can come here okay d can come here so i'll write inside let me write inside let d can come here okay then d faces north and sits exactly opposite to h and he sits exactly opposite to h so if you get confused i'll draw another diagram also for this okay because you are getting two possibilities right so let me draw another diagram so that you won't be confused just a second so there is a rectangular table eight persons they are all facing center now d is facing north so in one possibility i'll keep d here in another possibility i'll place d here and all of them are facing the center right now d faces north and sits exactly opposite to h so h comes here h comes here e is to the immediate left of h see this person e is to the immediate left of h h is facing center so if he is facing center 
this will be his right and this will be his left correct right and left so now e is to the immediate left of h which means e comes here in this case e is to the immediate left of h again this is the right of h this will be the left of h so e comes here then a and g sits on the same side a and g are sitting together okay a and g sitting together g is exactly opposite to b g is exactly opposite to b then b who sits immediate right of c so b is sitting immediate right of c okay b is sitting immediate right of c g and a are sitting together huh? remember so g is exactly opposite of b and b who sits immediate right of c a is to the next of d a is to the a is next to the left of d which means a is immediate left of d a is next to the left of d means a is immediate left of d so a is immediate left of d means what so this will be his left right so a is immediately to the left of d a comes here in this a is immediately to the left of d means a comes here but a and g should be sitting together a and g should be sitting together so this possibility is wrong this possibility is wrong got it so a and g should be sitting together so g comes here opposite of g there is b and b is sitting immediate right of c that means c comes here so c is right will be b and which one is left the one which is left is f so f comes here so this is our sitting arrangement so now let us look into the uh, questions so before that let me copy this solution okay so let's see the question who is sitting opposite of a who is sitting opposite of a opposite of a the person who is sitting opposite of a is c so here the answer will be option d none of the above okay c is sitting opposite of a next who is next to e in clockwise direction clockwise means in this way okay this is clockwise and this is anti-clockwise so who is next to e in clockwise direction next to e then comes b so b is the answer which is option b b then which of the following pairs of persons has both the person sitting on the same side with first person sitting to the right of second person c which of the following pairs of persons has both persons sitting on the same side one condition they should be sitting on the same side second condition with first person sitting to the right of second person c d and f d and f are sitting in the same set this condition is followed second condition is what first person sitting to the right of second person here first person is who d whether d is sitting to the right of f whether d is sitting to the right of f no d is sitting to the left of f c f is facing north so therefore left means this thing right so d is sitting left of f so d is not sitting right of second person so this option is wrong c and b yes c and b are sitting together right then whether c is sitting immediate right of the b whether c is sitting right of b no even here c is sitting left of b so this option is also wrong f and c f and c are not sitting on the same side therefore this is also wrong a and g yes a and g are sitting on the same side and the first person is a whether a is sitting to the right of g yes a is sitting to the right of g here hence option d a g is the answer next who is sitting opposite to e so who is sitting opposite to e opposite to e is f so therefore option c f is the right answer which of the following statement is definitely true okay a is facing north no a is facing east a is facing east e is sitting opposite of f e is sitting opposite of f yes it is true okay this is true other two will be false if you want to check you can see f is to the left of g no f is not to the left of g f is to the left of c c is to the left of a no c and a are far away so this is also false option b is the right answer okay the amount of money invested in rupees crore 
in the core infrastructure areas of two districts x and y of a state as follows so here they have given the two district that is x and y and on the left side that is in the first column you can see the core area where they are investing their money so here you can see that in electricity that is in the year 1995 x district is investing 815.2 crore rupees and in the year 1996 they are investing 100 1054.2 crore rupees like again in chemical okay in the chemical field they are investing 389.5 crore rupees in 1995 and in 1996 476.7 crore so like this there are five core areas electricity chemical thermal solar nuclear and here you can see the total amount invested in 1995 by x district and here total amount invested by x district in 1996 you can see the same thing is given in the other side that is for the y district okay for the year 1995 and 1996 okay now let's move on to the question by what percent was the total investment in the two district more in 1996 as compared to that in 1995 so here you have to see by what percent the total investment in the two district more in 1996 compared to 1995 so in 1996 what is the total investment by x as well as y here you can see the total investment in 1996 by x district is 3489.5 3489.5 and by y district in the year 1996 is 8352.0 now what is the sum of this so sum of this will be so this will be how much 11841.5 in the year 1996 now what is the total investment in 1995 so that is 2981.1 plus 70 81.6 so what is the sum now the sum will be here 10062.7 that is in the year 1995 so here what they asked by what percent the total investment is more in 1996 compared to 1995 so in 1995 if i take the approximate value that is if i take this as 10000 i can consider it as 10000 right because it is close to that and this 11841 so 10000 and here i'll consider it as 11841 okay so this is how much more the total investment in 1996 is how much more than the total investment in 1995 so here it is i can say 1841 rupees more correct 1841 11841 minus 10000 if you do you will get 1841 so this is what percentage you have to find the so zero zero get cancels so 1841 divided by 100 means like it is 18.41 percentage so the approximate value the closest value here is 18 percentage so option d 18 percent is the right answer approximately how many times the total investment in x district was the total investment in y district so approximately how many times total investment in x district total investment is how much So that is the sum of 1995 and 1996, which is 3489.5 plus 2981.1. So this is going to be how much? 9104345666470. Okay. So let me assume this number as the closest value. I'll take it as 6400. Okay. That is the sum of X district. Sum of Y district will be how much? Eight thousand three fifty two plus seven zero eight one point six. So that will be one five four double three. One five four double three. I'll consider it as one five four double zero. Okay. So this total investment in X district was how much time of Y? So that is six thousand four hundred is how many times? I mean, this fifteen thousand four hundred is how many times of six thousand four hundred you have to find? That means fifteen thousand four hundred divided by six thousand four hundred you do. So zero zero will get cancelled. So this is approximately how much? So here, if you find sixty four, one fifty four. See one fifty four. I can write it as one twenty eight plus one twenty eight. See one fifty four minus one twenty eight. You do how much you will get? So that is twenty uh, six. 
so 128 divided plus 26 divided by 64 okay so this is two times 64 to the 128 so you know that it is two times now 26 by 64 this is approximately how much times so see here if you see 26 by 64 so that will be it's less than a half right it is less than a half so here if you see it is greater than 2 greater than 2 but less than half greater than see this is greater than to this value the x value is greater than 2 but less than 2.5 so which is the number here so here you can say option c will be our answer okay you have to choose no need to find the accurate answer so you can choose see because uh, half of 64 is 32 but this is less than a half so you can say this value of x or the answer is greater than 2 because it is 2 plus and it is less than 2.5 so according to the given option our answer will be 2.4 that is option number c the investment in electricity and thermal energy in 1995 in these two districts formed what percent of the total investment made in that year investment in electrical and thermal energy in 1995 so that is here how much 815.2 right and thermal 690.4 that is from x district in these two district they told you have to include y also so that is 2065.8 2065.8 and thermal 1232.7 one two three two point seven so find the sum so sum will be eight plus two ten seven plus four eleven twenty one so one here two in the carry five plus five ten twelve thirteen fourteen the nine plus one ten sixteen nineteen twenty eight plus two ten sixteen eighteen then two three four four thousand eight hundred and four point one so i'll consider it as four thousand eight hundred approximate value so this is the sum okay is uh, what percent of the total investment made in that year total investment made by x is how much 2981.1 total investment made by y is 7081.6 so if the sum of this will be how much 10062.7 the close value approximate value i'll consider it as 10000 so this is what percentage you have to find so zero zero get cancelled so the answer here will be 48 percentage the closest value to this is option b which is 47 percent right so let's move on to the next question in y district the investment in which area in 1996 showed the least percent increase over the investment in that area in 1995 now go through the options see the options electricity chemical solar nuclear so 1995-1996 of Y district. So which has least percent increase you have to find. First one electricity. See here electricity in 1995 it is 2065.8. Here it is 2365.1. So I can consider. See you take the approximate value. Don't go to find the uh, exact. So take the approximate value. Let us say electricity. Okay. In the year 1995. Let me take it as 2000. And in 1996, I'll take it as 2300, the closest value I'll take. So how much increase here? 300 increase. So 300 is what percent of 2000? So here if you find 300 by 2000, zero get cancels. So this is close to 15 percentage. This is 15 percent. So electricity increased by 15 percentage. Okay. Likewise, next one is chemical. So chemical 745. Okay. Let me take chemical as 750 then uh, increase to 986 i will consider it as 1000 close to 1000 how much increase 250 increase 250 by 750 this is 1 upon 3 1 by 3 is nothing but 33.33 percent increase so this is 33.33 percent okay so who is the least now until now electricity is the least okay then see the solar so solar it is 1000 300 let me take it as 1300 clear so here it is 1792 which is i'll take it as 1800 how much percent increase how many how much increase 500 increase of 1300 divided by 100 so zero zero get cancels so if you see 500 upon 13 if you do 13 
is a 39, 13 4 is a 52, so it is 13 3 is a 39, 110. So this will be uh, how much it is more than 35 right uh, how much approximately 38 percent i can say so close to 38 percent right so this is close to 38 percent then the last one is nuclear nuclear is here 1674 okay let me take it as 1700 and uh, increase to 2182 i'll take it as 2200 okay so here again how much increase 500 increase 500 divided by 1700 into 100 so 0 0 get cancelled so if you divide by 7 how much you get 17 2 is a 34 17 3 is a 51 uh, it is it is about 20 percent okay so it is clear that it is about 20 percent no need to find the values because already you know electricity is only 15 percent so this thing you are getting about 20 percent so don't waste your time you can clearly easily mark option a electricity as the answer okay because this is beyond 20 percent so they have asked you the least percent increase so electricity is the answer the next one if the total investment in y district shows the same rate of increase in 1997 as it had showed from 1995 to 1996 then what approximately would be the total investment in y district in 1997 so they are saying that if the same percentage increase is happening in y district for 1997 like it happened previously from 1995 to 1996 then what would be the total investment in 1997 in y district they are asking you correct so in 1996 what is the total investment 8352 so either you can take it as 8300 or 8400 whatever okay 7081 is the investment in 1995 okay let me take it as 7000 okay 7000 here and this i will take it as 8300 okay 8300 and 7000 okay so how much percent increase you have to see this is if i take 7000 and this if i take 8300 how much increase you can see here 1300 increase is there correct 1300 increase is what percentage you see first so at the same rate then it will happen in the next year for 1996 to 1997 the same percentage increase will happen now you have to find this 1300 is what percent of 7000 okay because that much percent increase has happened here so this is how much percent how to find 1300 you can think it as 700 plus 600 correct 1300 you can split the number as 700 plus 600 why why you have to split this number because you know that 700 upon so this one you can split it as 700, 700 upon 7000 divided by 600 upon 7000 so 700 is 10 percent of 7000 right 10 percent of 7000 is 700 therefore this is 10 percent plus 600 is what percent of 7000 see zero zero uh, 600 is what percent of 7000 if you want to find you know that 10 percent value is 700 one percent value is 70 10 percent value is 700 1 percent value is 70 so 600 will be how much 7 8s of 56 right therefore 78 times will 78 times is 560 78 times is 560 so this is approximately 8 times so 10 percent plus 8 percent 18 percent increase you can take okay because 9 percent if you do it is going beyond 600 630 so you can take it as 8 percent increase so 10 plus 8 18 percent so from 1995 to 1996 what is the percentage increase 18% increase so the same percentage you have to calculate okay so for 8300 what is the 18% value 18% value of 8300 so this will be how much see 29 is 18 250 times so from 9 if you multiply 9 0 0 9 3 is a 27 9 8 is a 72 74 74 divided by 50 divided by 50 you can consider it as 100 upon 2 50 is nothing but 100 by 2 so 100 will come here again 2 will multiply so therefore you will get 0 0 7 2 is a 14 then 4 2 is a 8 9 then 7 2 is a 14 so 1 4 9 4 double 0 divided by 100 so that is 1 4 9 4 you can take 8300 plus 1 4 9 4 if you do 4 9 7 9 9794 something approximately you will get here correct 
this is right right 7 to the 14 and uh what is 8 9 7 to the 14 yeah okay so if you get 9 7 9 4 something this is close to which number here so this is close to 9 8 5 0 so the answer will be option a 9 8 5 0 clear the table shows the raw material requirements for a crankshaft machining line of a major automobile manufacturer located in western india the company policy requires that adequate raw material has to be maintained at least a day in advance okay so here the raw material requirements is given that means 15 days the work is under progress and for every day how many units of raw materials are required is given that is for the first day 50 units of raw materials is required then for the second day 25 units of raw materials is required like this up to 15 days it is given okay and the company they have to order it a day in advance understood so if it if the company requires any raw material it has to order a day in advance from the supplier now if you come to the question if a raw material inventory on day zero was 165 units the manager requires to place an order latest by which day okay so then so that means at the day zero they are having 165 units of raw materials then after which day they need to order a new supply after which day they need to order for a new supply you have to find so that means this 165 raw materials will be consumed for how many days you see see for the first day 50 units is consumed okay for the first day 50 units is consumed out of 165 then for the second day 25 units is consumed for third day 30 units is consumed see you calculate the sum also in your mind okay this should not cross this 165 understood fourth day 20 units is consumed fifth day 5 unit is consumed then 6 unit is consumed then 2 units is consumed okay just find the sum how much it became here 50 plus 25 75 75 plus 30 105 105 plus 20 135 i mean 125 125 plus 5 130 136 138 so it is 138 now then on the eighth day 10 unit so it became 148 then on the ninth day 15 unit is required okay so 15 if you do add how much it will become 148 plus 15 163 so on the ninth day 163 units is consumed okay remaining is how much remaining is only two units now remaining is two units but on the tenth day how much is required 20 unit is required but it is how much is left only two unit is left so when you have to order you have to order a day advance that means if you require on the 10th then you have to order it on the 9th itself so on 10th 20 units is required right so you have to order a day advance so that means you have to order on 9th so the next order will be on the 9th then next one if the raw material inventory on a day 0 was 73 units okay on the day 0 73 units inventory was there then the manager orders for 17 53 and 86 units on first second and fourth day respectively when does he when does he need to order next see already there is 73 units okay on the day zero first day how much is consumed first day 50 units is consumed correct 50 units is consumed out of 73 50 units is consumed how much is left left is 23 but the manager is ordering 17 units on the first day so 23 plus 17 now the total will be how much 40 so 40 units will be left for the second day but second day how much unit is consumed second day 25 units is consumed out of 40 now 25 units is consumed how much is left 15 unit is left then second day manager orders 53 units so 15 plus 53 that is 68 now so 68 units of raw materials are there then for the third day how much is consumed 30 units for the third day 30 unit is consumed so 68 minus 30 it will be 38 but he does not order anything on the third day he is ordering on the fourth day okay 
then for the fourth day 20 unit is consumed out of 38 because he is not ordering anything extra so from 38 only 20 unit is consumed now the left is how much 18 unit is left so on fourth day he is ordering 86 units 86 unit he is ordering so 86 plus 18 so that is 104 104 then on the fifth day five unit is consumed then he is not ordering anything okay so just subtract go on go on subtracting from this so from 104 if five unit is consumed 99 is left on sixth day six unit is consumed 93 is left correct on the seventh day two unit is consumed 91 is left on the eighth day 10 unit is consumed 81 is left ninth day 15 unit is consumed 81 minus 15 66 unit is left then on the 10th day 20 unit is consumed so 66 minus 20 46 11th day 25 unit is consumed so that is 21 is left 12th day 10 unit is consumed so 11 is left 13th day 5 unit is consumed okay 5 unit is consumed so how much is left 11 minus 5 6 is left but 14th day how much is required 14th day 20 is required but he is left with only 6 now so that means he has to order for the new supply so when will he order he will order on 13th so he will order on the 13th okay so therefore when does he order next he will order on the 13th day clear then if the raw material supplier starts acting fishy and delays his supplies by 48 hours supplier is delaying by 48 hours okay then which day's production will be hit if the starting inventory on day 0 is 163 units and an order is placed on the morning of day 7. Order is placed on the morning of day 7 but raw material supplier starts acting fishy and he delays his supplies by 48 hours. That means if the manager is ordering on day 7 he will get his supply after 48 hours. That means on day 9 he will get. This is the meaning okay so until day 9 he has to survive with this 163 units itself will he survive or not you have to check will he survive with 163 units you have to check until day 9 see for the first day he is using 50 units okay so 50 units is used second day 25 that means total 75 third day 30 75 plus 30 105 105 plus 20 125 plus 5 130 136 138 148 and 148 plus 15 163 so that means on the day 9 this whole 163 unit is consumed so this is finished and on the 10th day 20 unit is required but the manager is already ordering on the 7th day itself so he will get the supply for the 10th day okay after 48 hours he will get now so he will get the supply for the 10th day so the production will not stop in this case the production will not stop so because until 9th day this 163 unit is consumed so however he is ordering on the 7th day after 48 hours he is getting the supply so the production will not stop therefore our answer will be option a none If the cost of placing an order is rupees 650 per order, determine the minimum cost incurred in question number 72 if we consider the whole cycle of 15 days. Question number 72 means a uh, question before this, that means this question. Okay, that is if a raw material inventory on a day 0 was 73 units and the manager orders 17, 53, 86 units on the first, second, and fourth day, so when does he order next? So this is that question. Here what they asked, if the cost of placing an order is 650 per day, for one order, how much it is costing? 650 per order. Determine the minimum cost, minimum cost incurred on question number 72 if we consider the whole cycle of 15 days. That means, see how many times the manager is ordering here. How many times he is ordering for the raw materials. See, already 73 units was all there that was in the day 0 itself 73 units was there so this is not that he ordered when he orders he ordered for the first day 17 units 17 unit he ordered for the first day so that means 
first day he is ordering 73 units so therefore the cost of that 17 uh, units will be how much 650 because per order no matter what is the number per order the cost is 650 rupees then on the second day see first day also he ordered second day also he has ordered so again for the second day also the cost will be 650 per order the cost is 650 then 86 units he ordered on the fourth day 86 units he ordered on the fourth day so on fourth day also he ordered 86 units here what they asked determine the minimum cost incurred in question number 72 if we consider the whole cycle of 15 days whole cycle of 15 days see he ordered 86 units right further did he order anything means uh, whether the all 15 days was completed by this thing no see this was sufficient only for 13 days this what he had ordered for the first second and fourth day all this was sufficient only up to 13 days right because 14th days he was getting shortage so he has to reorder on 13th he has to order it on 13th right so therefore that also you have to consider because they have taken 15 days cycle 15 days cycle see on 13 days he was left with only six unit so on the 13th day he was only left with six unit but how much was required on the 14th day 20 and for 15th day 10 so suppose suppose if he had ordered 24 units because he is already having six right 24 plus 6 will be 30 20 plus 10 will be 30 so suppose if he orders 24 units on 13th day so this 15 days he can complete right 15 days he can complete so that will be the minimum cost that means if he orders on 13th okay so he has to order on 13th he has to order on 13th so if he orders 20, 24 units on 13 this whole cycle will complete and this will be the minimum cost for him okay this will be the minimum cost so what will be the total sum the total sum here it will be how much so this is uh, 2400 plus 200 2600 the minimum cost will be 2600 rupees if the daily pilferage is 5 units that means uh, that is 5 unit is going out okay uh, then find the minimum number of units to be ordered through the whole cycle if we start with an inventory on day 0 of 100 units assume that we end with 0 inventory see if the daily pilferage is 5 units find the minimum number of units to be ordered through the whole cycle if we start with an inventory on day 0 of 100 units see if they had started with 100 units okay but this you know very well that this 100 unit is not sufficient to run up to 15 days okay see day 0 you have got 100 units you have not ordered anything but you have 100 units but you know very well that this 100 unit is not sufficient to run up to 15 days so therefore you have to order extra right and you have to order extra and along with that every day this 5 unit is going waste okay this 5 unit pilferage means it's like it's going waste okay this 5 unit is every day this 5 unit is going waste got it so therefore how much he should order so that the whole cycle of 15 days should complete okay what is the minimum number of units that he has to order apart from this 100 because this 100 is already there apart from this how much he has to order so that this whole 15 day cycle will be completed including that every day the five unit pilferage is there now see understand see 100 units uh, raw material is there right first day 50 unit is consumed 50 unit is consumed 50 is left 50 was left but in this 50 again five units was in daily pilferage right if the daily pilferage is five unit that means this five unit is wasted it is of no use so that means he is left with only 45 okay he is left with 45 then for the second day 25 unit is consumed out of this 45 25 is consumed how much is left 20 was left but again in this 20 5 unit is waste okay so that means only 15 is left on the third day 30 unit is consumed 30 unit is consumed but he was having only 15 
now come with the minus you take the negative because here you have to find how much is required right minimum number of units that to be ordered so what happens now it will come in negative numbers so you go on continuing with that so he needs 30 units but he was left with 15 so again 15 units negative will get because 15 is already there again 15 extra you require right 15 extra you require because already 15 plus is there by this 100 but you are shortage of 15 so this 15 extra you took you think you think that you have taken this extra this 15 again in this 15 okay 5 is again uh, what it is a pilferage again that means minus 5 so it will be minus 15 minus 5 will be minus 20 okay minus 20 because 5 units pilferage is there so whatever comes you just go on adding for this 15 unit one thing is extra again in that 5 unit pilferage is there so 15 plus 5 20 so remember 5 unit pilferage is always there then on fourth day 20 unit is required okay so 20 is required right? already minus 20 was there again 20 is required minus 40 it will become again on that pilferage is 5 so it will become minus 45 then on the fifth day you require 5 units so already it was minus 45 so again you require 5 more units so it will become minus 50 plus 5 unit pilferage so it will become minus 55 on sixth day 6 unit is required so minus 55 okay it was there so you require again 6 that means it will become minus 61 again on that minus 5 pilferage will be there so minus 66 seventh day 2 unit is required already minus 66 was there so again plus 2 if you do it means minus 68 again on that 5 unit pilferage minus 73 then on the 8th day 10 unit is required minus 73 was there if 10 unit extra again if you take it will become minus 83 then again 5 unit pilferage it will be minus 88 on 9th day 15 so which means minus 88 and 15 which will be minus 103 then 5 unit pilferage will be minus 108 on 10th day 20 that will be minus 128 again 5 unit pilferage minus 133 then on 11th day 25 so 133 minus 25 so it will be minus 158 plus 5 unit pilferage minus 163 then on 12th day 10 unit required so minus 173 plus 5 unit pilferage minus 178 on 13th day again 5 unit is required so minus 183 and 5 unit pilferage minus 188 on 14th day 20 units so minus 208 and 5 unit pilferage minus 213 then on 15th day 10 unit which means minus 223 then 5 unit pilferage which means minus 228 okay so that means this 228 what you get minus 228 if you had ordered this 228 then this whole cycle would complete easily understood along with this 100 which was in the zero today if you order 228 raw materials this whole cycle would easily completed would be easily completed that's the meaning okay understood so this whole cycle would be completed got it so therefore our answer will be option d 228 in a watch the minute hand crosses the hour and for the third time exactly after every three hours 18 minutes 15 seconds of watch time what is the time gained or lost by this watch in one day see listen carefully in a watch the minute hand crosses the hour and for the first for the third time exactly after every three hours 18 minutes 15 seconds so third time it crosses exactly after three hours 18 minutes 15 seconds always remember in a normal watch in a normal watch okay the minute hand crosses the hour and for the first time i'm telling for the first time the minute hand crosses our hand at 65 5 by 11 minutes remember this point okay this is the fixed value okay after every 65 5 by 11 minutes 
the minute hand crosses the hour hand in the normal watch okay so if you simplify this this mixed fraction if you convert it into proper fraction you will get 720 upon 11 minutes 720 upon 11 minutes okay this is for the first time in the normal watch first time the minute hand crosses the hour and at 720 by 11 minutes then for the third time if you want to see for third time so it will be three times of this so multiply by three how much you will get 2160 by 11 minutes after 2160 by 11 minutes the minute hand crosses the hour and for the third time in normal watch but in this watch in this watch the minute hand crosses the hour hand after 3 hours 18 minutes 15 seconds that means 3 hours converted into minutes see here you have converted this into minutes right now see whether this watch is gaining the time or it is losing the time now how to find convert it into minutes 3 hours if you convert it into minutes 3 into 60 18 minutes plus 15 seconds if you want to convert it into minutes 15 upon 60 63 is a 180 180 plus 18 is 198 plus 1 by 4 198 plus 1 by 4 so that will be how much so this will be 198 4 times is how much 8 4 is a 32 9 4 is a 36 39 4 1 is a 4 5 6 7 7 92 plus 1 divided by 4 which is 7 93 by 4 okay that is in this the given question okay in this watch okay in the given question the this watch is crossing the the minute hand crossing the hour and at 7 93 by 4 minutes here the normal watch it crosses after 2160 by 11 minutes but this watch crosses at 7 93 by 4 minutes but you cannot compare right you cannot compare here you cannot say which uh, whether the clock is gaining the time or losing the time because the denominator is different here the denominators are different so what you do make the denominators equal so that then you can compare whether the watch is gaining or losing whether the watch is gaining the time or losing the time you can understand so for that sake you need to make the denominators equal so what i will do here i'll multiply this by 4 both the numerator and denominator for this i'll multiply by 11 by this denominator so that our denominators will become equal on multiplying by 4 here i will get 6 4 is a 24, 4 1 is a 4, 5 6, 4 2 is a 8, 8 6 4 0 divided by 44. Here, what I will get 7 and 3 by 11, 3 9 plus 3 12, 7 plus 9 16 17, and 7 plus 1 8, 8 7 2 3 by 44. So, normal watch in normal watch, you can see that third time the minute hand will cross our hand after 8 6 4 0 by 44 minutes, but in this watch, it is after 8 7 2 3 by 44 minutes it is taking extra time right extra time means what extra time means the time is not gained here the time is lost this much time is lost extra time it is taking means that much time is lost in the clock okay always remember if the time taken is more that means the watch is losing the time okay so the time is lost here how much time is lost find the difference you will get how much time is lost 8640 by 44 minus 8723 by 44 if you do you will get how much time is lost okay so how much time will be is lost in this case see for every three minutes of a norm for every third time in a normal watch okay third time in a normal watch the minute hand crosses at what time 8640 by 44 minutes right so see i'm telling about normal watch in a normal watch the minute hand crosses our hand for the third time at 8640 by 44 minutes but in this watch the time is lost so for every third time how much time is lost in this case for every third time how much time is lost the time lost here will be difference of this 8723 minus 8640 3 minus 0 is 3 12 minus 4 is 8 83 by 44 minutes is lost if you subtract this okay 
this from this if you subtract you will get 83 by 44 minutes that much time is lost on comparing with the normal watch okay when you compare with the normal watch for every third time okay that means for this much minute 8640 by 44 minutes for this much minutes this much minute is lost okay for this much minute 8640 by 44 minutes in a normal watch this much minute is lost in the given watch okay therefore how much time is lost by the watch in one day because you understood the what the watch is the time is lost here right so the answer will be either option a or option b option c and d is eliminated because here it is given gain but the watch is losing the time so either a or b will be our answer but how to find question is what how much time is lost in one day so in one day how many minutes will be there so 24 hours 60 minutes if you multiply so total number of minutes will be 1440 minutes so in 1440 minutes how many minute is lost you have to find for this much minutes of a normal watch this many unit is lost therefore for this many units of a normal watch how many units of time is lost you have to find so for that cross multiply see this is the better way because if you see the answer uh, you have you will get in the decimal points okay so decimal calculation is difficult when you compare with the fractional calculation fraction calculation will be easy okay so since this is like this if a is equals to b since c is equals to what like this that means cross multiply you will do now so the same thing here okay so cross multiply that is 83 by 44 into 1440 whole divided by 8640 divided by 44 this 44 44 get cancelled okay so 0 0 get cancelled 4 3 is a 12 4 6 is a 24 4 2 is a 8 then 4 1 is a 4 4 6 is a 24 36 1 times 36 6 times is 2 1 6 so you left with 83 by 6 minutes 83 by 6 minutes is how much 83 by 6 means 6 1 is a 6 23 6 3 is a 18 that means 5 is the reminder 13 5 by 6 minutes 13 5 by 6 minutes that means 13 minutes 5 by 6 if you convert it into seconds 5 by 6 minute means it is less than a minute convert it into seconds then 5 by 6 into 60 6 ones are 6 tens are 5 tens are 50 so 13 minute 50 seconds okay so how much time is lost in one day 13 minutes 50 seconds is lost in one day clear so this is all for today thank you so much for watching our videos see you all in our next sessions till then stay focused and keep learning take care bye bye jai hind